So our next mention of the word repent is in 1 Samuel. So we're leading up to that mention. But first I want to look at a prophecy in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. So Moses said, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, and to him ye shall hearken. So Moses prophesied that God's prophet was coming. And it was a prophet with a capital P. So who is God's prophet. Who would that be? So his prophet would be his son, Jesus. So keep that in mind. Now back to 1 Samuel. And we've already looked at it. We've met a woman named Hannah. And she didn't have any children. And she was in bitterness of soul. And she prayed to the Lord. She made a vow. If you'll give me a man child, I'll give him back to you all the days of his life. And the Lord remembered her. He gave her a son. She took him to the tabernacle, and she gave him back to the Lord. And she worshiped, and she prayed a beautiful prayer of praise. But it was also prophetic because look at verse 10. So 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 10. She said, The Lord shall judge the ends of the earth, and he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. So Moses prophesied a prophet was coming. Hannah prophesied his king was coming. So who would be God's king? So he said, she said, the horn of his anointed. So anointed in the Hebrew means Messiah. In Greek, it means Christos. In English, it means Christ. So who would be God's king? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Okay. So then Hannah's son grew up, Samuel. He grew up in the tabernacle. He served the Lord as a child under Eli the priest. And the sons of Eli were also priests, but they were really sons of who? The devil, the law. They were wicked. They corrupted the tabernacle. They even made the people despise the offerings of the Lord because when they would bring them, they would take the best parts what they wanted. They said, give it to us, and if not, we'll take it by force. And so Eli, the priest, their dad, let this go on. But was God going to let it go on? No. So he sent word to Eli. Look at verse 27. He said, There came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear into the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? So if Eli was a priest, who, what tribe would he be from? Levi. He would be from the tribe of Levi. And so who would his ancestor be? So only whose sons could be priests? Aaron. So only Aaron's sons could be priests. And so... The man told Eli, Did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? So this was a great honor that God bestowed upon the tribe of Levi, and specifically, you know, Aaron and his sons. He he gave them the honor of taking the people's sacrifices and and offering them to him. But look what he said, twenty nine. Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifice and at my offering? He said, you're kicking at my sacrifices and at my offerings like they're worthless. So God does not like when people take things that he considers holy and treats them like they're nothing. And that's what they were doing. He said, you're honoring your sons before me. He said, you all are making yourselves fat with the best of all the offerings. Now look at this verse. <coughs> 30 and 31. He said, wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord, he said, Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house. There shall not be an old man in thy house. So Aaron was the first high priest. Aaron had four sons. Nadab, Abihu, which were both, they both offered strange fire before the Lord, and they were both killed. And Eleazar and Ithamar. So the first, Aaron was the first high priest, then Eleazar became the next high priest, and then his sons, who went on down, Eleazar is the line, line of the high priest. And so Eli was actually a descendant of Ithamar. So at one time, at some point in this, in this time, it switched over to Ithamar's line. If Eli was a high priest, the Bible tells us he was the priest, it doesn't specifically say he was high priest. So we think he was, and it seemed like he was the one in charge here at the tabernacle at this time. So God said, I will 
cut off your arm in the arm of your father's house. So we see later, at some point during Solomon's reign, the line switched back to Eleazar when a man named Zadok became high priest. So God said, I'll cut off the arm of your father's house. So it switched back over to Eleazar. <coughs> but there is a more perfect fulfillment of this prophecy. This is awesome. So look at verse 35. The man said, God said, I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to that which is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. So he said, so he prophesied that God's priest was coming. And this priest would be a priest forever. So who would God's priest be? Jesus. So this man prophesied God's priest was coming, and that would be Jesus. And so the the one that was born in Bethlehem of the house of David. So the prophecy has a more perfect fulfillment in that the the priest would not only switch from the line of Ithamar back to Eleazar, but it would change from the tribe of Levi altogether to the tribe of Judah. Because when he came, he the Levitical priesthood was completed because his faithful priest had come, who was the line of the tribe of Judah, Jesus. And so this is so awesome. So in the Old Testament, the nation of Israel was led by three different types of people, prophets, priests, and kings. So David was a king, but he was never a prophet or priest. Elijah was a prophet. He was never a priest or a king. But Jesus was prophesied to be all three, prophet, priest, and king. So we're going to look and see if he fulfilled all these roles. And so first of all, prophet. So God told Moses, I will raise him up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. So what is a prophet? So a prophet is someone that God spoke through. He would give them a message, they would tell the people. So they spoke the word of God. So Jesus was the word of God. Remember the verse in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So this is much different than speaking to prophets and having them deliver the message. So Jesus actually was the word. And he said over in John 12, 49 and 50, he said, I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So he said, I'm not speaking of myself. I'm speaking of my Father has given me. And people notice this because <clears throat> the Pharisees and the chief priests, they were always after Jesus. And one day... They asked the officers, they said, why haven't you brought him to us? And they said, no man spake like this man. So they knew there was something different about him. And after the Sermon on the Mount, it says the people were astonished at his doctrine. And they said, for, because he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. So he taught the words of God, which was much different than the words of the self-righteous Pharisees and scribes. Peter said, thou hast the words of eternal life. And so Jesus even called himself a prophet. When they rejected him in Nazareth, he said, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country. So prophets also foretold the future. And Jesus did that multiple times. He told them exactly what was going to happen to, the, happen to him. He, when, when he came into Jerusalem, he said all the city was moved. And they said, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. And when he wept over Jerusalem... And he told the future of it. He said, <coughs> He said, They shall lay thee even with the ground, <coughs> and thy children within thee. So he, he prophesied the destruction of Jerusalem. And he also told them that he was going away, but that he would come again and receive them unto himself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So this is the only prophecy he ever spoke that, had not, that has not been fulfilled yet. But just as sure as the other ones were fulfilled, this one will be too. He said, surely I come quickly. So Jesus is God's prophet. Now let's look and see if he was king. 
So, <coughs> remember when he was born, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born? To King of the Jews. He was born, he grew up in Nazareth, he started his ministry. And Nathaniel said, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? But when he saw him and he talked to him, he said, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art King of Israel. And then when Jesus came to Jerusalem the last time, remember, they cut down the palm branches, <clears throat> and they cried out, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus called himself a king. Pilate said, Art thou the King of the Jews? He said, Thou sayest. So he's saying, Yes, I am. And remember, Pilate had two prisoners, had Jesus, had Barabbas, a thief and a murderer. He brought him out in the temple was rent from top to bottom. God was showing that a new and living way to come to him had been opened up, and that was through his son. The old way was through the high priest. He would go back once a year behind the veil and make a sacrifice, and he would take the blood behind the veil and sprinkle it on the mercy seat. So Hebrews 9, 8 says, The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. But Christ, being come and high priest of good things to come, by greater and more perfect tabernacle, neither by the blood of goats or in calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So Jesus went in through the veil, which is his flesh, and sacrificed his own blood and opened up a new and living way to come to God. So it says, but Christ being come and high priest. So what is a priest? What did they do? So they were mediators between God and man. They represented God to the people. They taught the people about him and his laws. And they represented the people to God. They offered their sacrifices to God and pleaded to God on their behalf. And this is what the Levite priests did. But the Levite priests were still sinners too. Look at this verse, Hebrews 7, 11. It says, If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Mel Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? So he's saying if the Levitical priesthood was perfect, then why did another priest have to come that was not after the order of Aaron? He said, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, whom Moses spoke nothing about concerning the priesthood. And yet it is far more evident, for after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. So the Levites were made priests because of a law. Jesus was made priest because of the power of an endless life. And so the Levitical priesthood was a way to temporarily cover the people's sins, and it, and it was to foreshadow the one that was coming that was going to make us one sacrifice, that would take away people's sins. <clears throat> and so he came, and the Bible says he was holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. So he fully represented God to the people because he was God. He represented the people to God because he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, took on our sins, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. He took our full punishment, and he offered up himself. So the veil is torn, it is finished saying, you leave out priest, you can go home. We don't need you anymore because our great high priest has come. We don't need any more lambs or bulls to be sacrificed because the Lamb of God has came and sacrificed himself. There doesn't have to be any more bloodshed or sprinkled on the mercy seat because he has shed his blood. He has become our mercy seat, which is the footstool of our God. And so then it says... Hebrews 8, 1, we have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So what's he up there doing? He's up there representing us to God, pleading on our behalf. The Bible says he ever liveth to make intercession for us. And you might say, well, he don't know what I'm going through down here. He knows. He took on the flesh. He came down and he lived in this world, but he never sinned. Hebrews 4, 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So you, you say, Lord, I'm lonely. He knows what it's like. I'm hungry. He knows. If, if you say, the devil's fighting me, he knows. You say, I'm sad. He knows. I'm heartbroken. He knows. If you say, Lord, my soul is exceeding sorrowful. He knows what it's like far worse than we could ever know what he went through. So he knows what it's like to be man. 
He knows what it's like to be God. So he is God's priest, and he will continue. And then one day God's going to turn and say, Son, it's time. He's going to send him back into the world. The first time he came, they stripped him, put a crown of thorns on him. But the next time he will be clothed in fine linen, white and clean. He'll have a name on his head, many crowns, on his vesture and on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he will stand, he will sit on the great white throne. And who will stand before him? <clears throat> it will be all those that did not listen to his words. As God told Moses, Whosoever would not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. And what he said, Jesus said, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. So they will be judged based on what they did with him. They rejected his words and they rejected him. And they will bow before him, not mocking him this time. They will be confessing him as Lord to the glory of God the Father. But it will be too late. So Jesus is God's prophet, priest, and king. And we better make sure that he is ours too.